So what if I told you that you've been studying pharmacology all wrong this whole time and that's why you're having a tough time? And then what if I told you that if you stay tuned till the end of this video, I guarantee you that you are going to know a hundred new drugs off the top of your head by the time you click off. Class is in session. What's up you guys and welcome back to my channel for those of you who are already part of the family for those of you who are new welcome my name is Kiara Selena I'm a practical nurse and on my channel I mainly talk about nursing but we also do a bit of beauty hair makeup and all that stuff so if you are into that please make sure you subscribe and don't forget to turn on your notification bell so you won't miss another video from me again. you've probably already determined based off of the title and the beginning of the video today's video is going to be all about pharmacology all about retaining your drugs remembering your drugs your classifications your nursing intervention side effects all of that I'm gonna help you guys study smarter so that you guys can start retaining your drugs and I don't want to make this video too long so let's get straight you've probably already determined based off of the title and the beginning of the video today's video is going to be all about pharmacology all about retaining your drugs remembering your drugs your classifications your nursing intervention side effects all of that i'm gonna help you guys study smarter so that you guys can start retaining your drugs and i don't want to make this video too long so let's get straight so antihypertensives right now antihypertensives generally not generally they are all used to decrease blood pressure but there are different types of antihypertensives and what makes them different is kind of just how they work in the body right they all decrease blood pressure but you may have one that works directly on your heart whereas another one will work on your kidneys in order to um, decrease blood pressure so they all they all work differently right but look at them in um, sections like in groups for example beta blockers right beta blockers usually work directly on the heart in order to decrease blood pressure that's not what i'm talking about the trick in order to remember your beta blockers is that if you look at the suffix they usually end in olol or lol so you'll have metropolol bisopolol atenolol right a tenno lol so they all end in o l o l or lol that's beta blockers so already you know that if you are presented a drug and you see that it ends in olol or lol you'll know that it's a beta blocker but most importantly you'll know that it's an antihypertensive drug let's look at a different type of antihypertensive drug let's take um ace inhibitors by example right for example ace inhibitors usually end in prill as opposed to beta blockers that usually end in olol or lol right laugh out loud remember that so ace inhibitors usually end in prill so you'll have um Benzapril, perinodapril, quinapril, captopril, right? So now you know that if you see a drug and it ends in pril, and remember that there are exceptions. You may have another drug that is not an antihypertensive that, and that does end in pril. But for the most part, if you see pril or olol, it's an antihypertensive. Let's look at calcium channel blockers, right? Calcium channel blockers usually end with Pine or pine, however you want to say it. So, nifedipine, nicardipine, um, amlodipine, right? So, if you hear peen, if you hear prill, if you hear olol, antihypertensive. And when it comes to um, diuretics, well, you'll have, they'll usually end in ide, right? So, hydrochlorothiazide, uh, furosemide. Um, things like that. I can't think of any other ones. Hmm, did I list any of them down? Uh, bumetanide. So they all end in ide for the most part, right? So if you see ide, olol, prill, or peen, pine, however you want to call it, you already know that it's an antihypertensive drug. 95% of the time, right? And these are for the generic names because I don't know how your school works, but my school personally, when they started teaching us um, pharmacology, they started teaching us the generic names. And over time, when we went on clinical and we started giving the drugs more, then we started to learn more of the brand names. But they should be teaching you, they're most likely gonna be teaching you the generic names first. I know. So uh, for another classification, let's say, um, benzodiazepines benzodiazepines are muscle relaxants they usually end in pam so you'll see lorazepam diazepam oxazepam so if you see anything pam you can assume 
that it's a uh, benzodiazepine. Now, once again, there are exceptions, so it, this trick isn't always going to apply, but for the most part, in most cases, it will. If you see Pam, it's most likely a benzo. And let's just use, uh, let's just use, um, for one last example, let's just say um, medications that help with high cholesterol, right? So you'll have statins. And the good thing about statins is that even for the brand names, there's also tricks. So for example, statins for high cholesterol, right? Um, you'll have atorvastatin, rosuvastatin, um, did I know, fluvastatin. They all end in statin. And also for the brand names, they usually end in or, O. Are. So you'll have Crestor, you'll have Americor, um, Lipitor, Zocor, right? So that's the good thing with statins because even their brand names have a trick, right? So that's pretty much it for the tricks. Like I said, I'll leave videos down below so that you guys can go check out other videos where um, you'll see people that share more little tricks like this for other classifications of drugs. So you know if a, a drug ends in statin, then it's a statin for high cholesterol. If a drug ends in either olol, peen, eyed, or prill, it's most likely an antihypertensive. Um, let's just do one more for fun, right? Let's do antibiotics. Well, antibiotics always end in IN. Well, most of the time, a lot of the time. Sometimes you'll see um, Zol too, like for example, metronidazole, but they always end in some type of psyllin, mycin, cyclin, something. So you have doxycycline, you have penicillin, you have um, rifamycin. Um, what else? Did I know any? So you have penicillin, tetracycline, doxycycline, rifamycin, ciprofloxacin, vancomycin, right? They all end in sin. And then sometimes they also end in zol. For example, metronidazole, like I said before. So whenever you see some type of cycline, mycin, sin, anything like that sounds like that, it's most likely a an antibiotic okay, drug. Okay, Ki, well thank you for all those for all those tricks, but how do I remember the side effects? Okay, side effects. Side effects is all about understanding what the drug does to you and how it works in your body. Now, I'm not gonna go into the more complicated ones, but I'm gonna go back to antihypertensives since that's really like, you're going to see antihypertensives a lot, a lot. Maybe not in your career, well, depending on where you choose to work once you become a nurse, you know, that could change because if you work in peds, you're probably not going to be giving a lot of antihypertensives. Um, if you compare peds to geriatrics, you're most likely going to be giving a lot more antihypertensives in geriatrics than you would be in pediatrics, right? But um, we'll go back to antihypertensives because it's something that you guys are going to see a lot. So what can you expect? Like, you, cause all you have to do is ask yourself questions, right? Okay, so what does an antihypertensive do? An antihypertensive brings down your blood pressure. Okay, so what do you think one of the side effects can be, right? You're giving somebody who has hypertension, right? So somebody has high blood pressure and you're giving them an antihypertensive to bring their blood pressure down. So one of the side effects would be the complete opposite of hypertension. It would be hypotension, right? Because it's not as though like if you give somebody a, a blood pressure pill, um, an antihypertensive pill, that their blood pressure is gonna go down to 120 over 80 and it's gonna be the perfect average and everything's gonna be good. No, if you give somebody who has high blood pressure an antihypertensive drug, well, their blood pressure can go down pretty low um, so hypotension would be one of the side effects of giving an antihypertensive drug right low blood pressure but what comes with low blood low blood pressure so have you ever kind of stood up too fast and got really really dizzy or for those of you who have smoked cigarettes before how did you feel the first time you smoked a cigarette really lightheaded really dizzy right or for those of you who've already had hangovers, how do you feel when you have a hangover? Well, that's kind of what it would be like, right? So you'd have low blood pressure, you would be lightheaded. With the lightheadedness comes the dizziness. And when you're dizzy, how do you feel? It starts to come up, right? You start to feel nauseous. And when you start to feel nauseous, how else do you feel? You start to feel like vomiting and things like that, right? So whenever you think of 
um, low blood pressure. Whenever you think of like, what are the side effects? What are um, the side effects of an antihypertensive drug? Well, you'll think low blood pressure. And what comes with low blood pressure? Like I said, the dizziness, the lightheadedness, the nausea, um, and all of that, right? So whenever, if you, ever you have a test and they say list two side effects of a cert, of an antihypertensive, already you know that hypotension is can be a side effect of giving an antihypertensive. Take antibiotics, right? Because antibiotics is also something that I saw a lot when I was on clinical. So what is an antibiotic? It's an antibacterial. It fights bacteria, right? But an antibiotic doesn't know what the difference between good and bad bacteria is. It just knows to kill bacteria, right? So we have good bacteria in our bodies, we have good bacteria in our intestines, we have good bacteria all over, and then you take an antibiotic, let's say you swallow your antibiotic, now it's in your stomach. Well, you have good bacteria in your stomach that's supposed to be there to fight off bad bacteria when it, when it comes, right? You take this antibiotic and this antibiotic gets rid of some of that bacteria in your gut and in your intestine. Well, now the flora in your intestine is disrupted. So what do you think you're going to feel if the good bacteria in your stomach that's there to kind of protect your intestine from bad bacteria, what do you think would happen if that bacteria, if some of that bacteria was to go away? Well, you would start to feel cramping. With cramping, you might want to poop. And with that, you might want to vomit. You might feel a little bit nauseous, right? So think very like digestive right think like oh like i have good bacteria in my stomach and you know you know my my warriors are gone so now there's not i don't have enough soldiers in my stomach to fight off the bad bacteria so now what's gonna happen well there's gonna be an imbalance i'm gonna feel uh you know like pooping you, you might have diarrhea you might have nausea you have with nausea usually comes vomiting um and things like that right and also for females we have good bacteria in our vaginas right so you get flagell you get metronized resolve because you the doctor found out you have bv well you have good bacteria that's there to fight off bad bacteria when it comes you know when it tries to enter but now you took metronidazole or you took flagell flagell is the brand name i think for metronidazole so now you took flagell and it got rid of some of the good bacteria that's there now you don't have enough soldiers to fight off the bad guys who are trying to enter so what do you think is going to happen once again your flora is disrupted your ph balance isn't going to be the same and with that you might get a yeast infection or you might start to see vaginal itching things like that right so whenever you take a drug for one thing it can cause kind of the opposite effect if that makes any sense right yeah i hope that makes sense i hope you guys are fine now okay so i you know i'm starting to understand um how to figure out the side effects but what do i do as a nurse what are my nursing interventions now you'll see that in your nursing drug books they will give you the main interventions that need to be done whenever you're about to give a drug right either interventions that you have to do before or after depending on what the drug is right but there are so many interventions that you can do sometimes and they don't really have to be that complicated they can really be simple right for example you give an antibiotic well you know an antibiotic can cause diarrhea right and if somebody has diarrhea a lot well that can cause them to be dehydrated so as a nurse what should you do as an intervention if you know that this drug this antibiotic that you just gave can make the person have um, go to the bathroom a lot and can cause dehydration how would you prevent that as a nurse well ensure that they're hydrated give them water right it doesn't have to be that complicated but it is a nursing intervention you could be like hey you know what um in my opinion i think that you should drink more fluids because xyz encourage fluid intake that's simple nursing intervention um for let's say you give a beta blocker a beta blocker like i said before works directly on your heart right so if a beta blocker works directly on your heart to lower blood pressure what do you think one of the side effects could be right that's why if you go into your nursing drug book and you check low low presser or bisoprolol metropolol whatever any um any beta blocker it'll tell you to check the patient's pulse and make sure that their pulse is 60 and above before giving it because it works directly on your heart and it can cause your heart rate to plummet right so 
what if knowing that what do you think a nursing intervention would be you would obviously take the patient's pulse before giving them the drug right you don't want to give them the drug knowing that this drug works directly on the heart and can make the heart rate go down you don't want to give this person the drug if their heart rate is 50 right things like that if you're going to give an antihypertensive drug you might say, oh, okay, well, the doctor knows what he's doing. And that's, that's one of the things that you really have to be careful with. You don't just do something because the doctor said so. There are interventions, there are things that you have to do. And you have to remember that when you are giving a medication, you're the one giving it. And your license is also going to be at risk along with the doctor if the doctor makes a mistake. It'll be both of you who made the mistake, not just the doctor, right? So you're giving a drug, you're giving an antihypertensive drug. You don't just give it because it's prescribed right and yes the the patient may have been taking this drug for the past two years but today for some reason the patient might just have hypotension today their blood pressure could just be low and now you just gave an antihypertensive drug to somebody whose blood pressure was 80 over 40. i mean i hope their blood pressure is not 80 over 40 but somebody's blood pressure is 80 over 40 and you just gave them an antihypertensive drug so how would you prevent mistakes like that? If you're giving an antihypertensive drug, you wanna make sure that the patient's blood pressure is high. Check the, check the patient's blood pressure before you give it, right? Know what the patient's condition is before you give them this drug, right? So you wouldn't really, for an antibiotic, you might not really have like that much nursing interventions to do before giving the drug, right? But for an antihypertensive drug, you would want to make sure that the patient's antihypertensive. <laughs> I mean that the patient's hypertensive before you give an antihypertensive drug because if they're hypotensive, maybe it's not an antihypertensive that they need, right? So simple things like that. It doesn't have to be complicated. Your interventions aren't rocket science, right? And and when you're when your teachers ask you for interventions, they're not necessarily asking you for exactly what's written in the book. Obviously, they want to know that you know what the main ones are. So for a beta blocker, like I said, it would be to make sure that the patient's pulse is 60 and above so that you're not giving them this drug that can affect their heart rate if their heart rate is too low. So for drugs like that, yeah, it'd be a little bit more specific, right? But for something like an, anti an, an antibiotic, like it can honestly be anything. For an antihypertensive, it could be, I think once I wrote on an exam to like, um, maybe make sure the patient is seated or something, just in, just in case of dizziness or clear the ground. Like, it, it can literally be anything. Like I said, it doesn't have to be rocket science. Just make sure that your patient's safe. <laughs> as long as you're keeping your, as long as your interventions show that, you know, you're kind of keeping the patient safe, but at the same time, as long as your interventions are like related, to um, the side effect, you should be good to go. Like I said, guys, I'm not a teacher. I'm not an expert. I'm fresh out of school. I'm still learning. These are just the little things that I learned along my journey, but I'm definitely gonna leave some links down below to some videos, some really detailed videos that you guys can go check out that'll help you guys a lot um, with pharmacology. But with that being said, I still hope that the little information I shared with you guys helped you guys. And if it did, then please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to share because somebody else may need this information. And if you wanna see more content like this and you were not yet subscribed, please subscribe and most importantly, turn on your notification bell so you won't miss another video from me again. And with that being said, I really hope you guys have a blessed evening, morning, night, whenever you're watching this. And I hope to see you guys in my next one. Bye.